people will ask you, what does that piece mean? What does this symbolize? You know, and a lot of the times there's a lot of mixed meaning in, in the work that you do. I don't think I sit there and I necessarily have a purpose. It's more of a meditation. I used to think that I couldn't make art because I didn't have some earth shattering conceptual message or or that somehow I hadn't struggled enough in my life to enter the world of fine art. It took me way too long to realize that I had meaningful thoughts. And of course, I was just as eligible as anybody else. Then finally, I realized that what I was experiencing and how I wanted to communicate this was what made my art mine. I have been mining the world of myself ever since. Recently, I stumbled upon the work of Jose Delhart who has doubled down on finding his art in the stories and memories of his family. Born in Puerto Rico, but growing up in Brooklyn, his highly personal art is just this remarkable assortment of stylized figures, mythical creatures, and UFOs. He often paints on cardboard, repurposed paper, and discarded pizza boxes. Jose derives his art from the beautiful, rich tapestry of his memories of growing up on his grandfather's yam farm in the mountains of Puerto Rico, his family, and the neighborhood life of Brooklyn, New York. Join me for this lovely conversation with the remarkable artist, Jose Del Hart. It is a talk filled with stories, adventure, and the magic of looking back for the inspiration of the present. To see more of Jose's art, plus relevant links, go to arttolife.com and click on podcasts. Okay, let's dive in now. Welcome to Art to Life, a podcast for the creatively curious. My name is Nicholas Wilton, and each week I'll help you rediscover not just the art of your life, but the art in your life. Join me as we explore that perfect blue at twilight, the wild frontiers of art making, and the extraordinary joy of finding your way as you go. Jose, listen, thanks so much for joining us today. And also congratulations on winning that third place in the Art to Life 2022 juried exhibition. That was, uh, that's actually how I came across your work. So thanks for all of that. That's awesome. I'm really, really honored to be here and blessed and just feeling really amazed by all this, you know, <laughs> wasn't, wasn't expecting any of it. So I'm, I'm really, really honored, really thankful. What? And it was it just kind of a fluke that you, I mean, you entered the show, you came across it. Do you enter a lot of shows? I like, I don't enter that many. I mean, no, yeah. not at all. You know, a, a good friend of mine who's still, you know, back in, in New York, uh, she sent it to me and um, she was like, you should, you should try out for this. And um, I didn't think too much of it. And as I got closer to the deadline, I was like, well, let me, let me send some of my artwork in and see what happens. And, you know. And this happens, so I'm just really I excited. I love it. Okay, well, as we were talking earlier, you know, I I usually do more research on an artist, but couldn't find, I could sort of dead-ended in different places. And I know you do music and you, you're multidisciplinary and artists and everything, but take us back, uh, you know, give us a little of your background. I've got your really amazing painting that you won third place on, this recycled pizza box painting. It's so cool. Um, so I have that in front of me and I have a ton of questions, but take us back a little bit, uh, spend a little time on your, you know, where you, where you came from and all, all that and your influences. Yeah. So um born in Puerto Rico when I was about five years old, my parents uh, moved to, to New York. So I was raised in Brooklyn, New York, the neighborhood of Sunset Park and um, very Hispanic neighborhood, um, Hispanic and Italian during the time that I was raised there, which was in the 80s. That was kind of my childhood, you know, being raised in New York City, always drawn to art and painting and um, drawing, you know, at the public school that I went to, PS 172. I, you know, always became, you know, right away became known as the kid who was always painting and, you know, going for these, um, you know, awards and contests and stuff like that. So I, I always, you know, enjoyed all of that. And then, you know, just started um, playing music at a young age, you know, Um went to uh, uh, specialized high school, as they call it back in New York, uh, went to Fiorello LaGuardia, which is a high school for, for performing art and, and um, fine art. And uh, there I just, you know, really flourished um, with uh, just the teachers that I 
was um, encountered with and uh, just all the influences. I actually met a really great friend of mine there who's also an artist and a musician. He's like a brother to me. He's a little bit older, so he was my student teacher at the time. He was going to college, and he would come in when we were in our you know studio classes and work on different projects with us. We became really great friends. My teacher, Jody Sunshine, connected us, and we were kind of you know hired by her to paint her studio, you know, just to literally paint the walls of her studio out in Soho. Became really great friends with Alex, uh, who goes by Hieronymus Boggs. And, um, you know, my my art and my music started to flourish even more because not only were we talking about making art, but we were also talking about music. So that's wow. where my music came from, you know, uh, connecting with Hieronymus. And uh, I started to play guitar and quickly learned how to play lap steel and uh, banjo and gosh just we made music for so so many years you know and you know just a lot of artwork and you know influencing each other and a lot of collaboration with with uh, other artists in, in the new york area for and all, all the while you were you were making art you know you were painting or drawing and and also i mean those cross over for you do you think of are you do are, are you chasing the same thing with the music as you are they are this sort of idea of connecting and the sort of spiritual realm that you hint at in the work or the work feels like that anyway. It does. It, it very much feels like that to me. Um, a lot of it seems meditative and um, obsessive. You know, I think that there's just certain things that call my attention, certain imagery. And I think that imagery connects me to, you know, the dense spirituality that, that I have, you know, and um, the things that I'm, kind of searching for uh being far away from my family i'm 43 now and being far away from my family is um has many different levels and i think that my music and my art really helped me connect to that you know that connect the distance between family and, and where i am right now so i think that when i when i meditate on my art i i feel i always find that it comes out subconsciously my attempt to connect <laughs> to connect spiritually and um, based on experience with my family and, and who I am, obviously, always comes out in, in, in the work that, that anyone does. It's, it's so interesting that, you know, that, that, that your spirituality and just the connection to family. I mean, that Brooklyn, you grew up in Brooklyn, a small neighborhood. I mean, when you said you both your parents worked a lot, I mean, were you guys just this sounds like a small little world you were you were living in and you know is that what it is and now you're are, are the rest of your family in brooklyn still or so you know I, I still have my sister and her wife who live in brooklyn still and i have you know my my friendships that became family that are still living in brooklyn you know some people move out and you know go go different directions but a lot of my roots are there i miss it terribly i miss the the dynamic and the energy. So, you know, I think that a, a lot of this has, you know, a lot, I think life in general is obviously a very, you know, multi-leveled experience that, you know, we're all kind of, it's a big journey. Um, so I think that where I am right now, um, the art really saves me and connects me. I feel a lot of, I feel for some reason entering my forties, I felt a lot of melancholy over my past experiences and growing up in, like I said, and, and you mentioned also Brooklyn, New York, big city, right? And uh, I felt when I look at my life, it feels like a small town life in a big city, mm. you know, because that was my world. You know, that was mm. Sunset Park was my world for many, many, many years growing up and even as an adult, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. And I, I really relate to what you're saying about the, the art can begin to to address or represent or feel like the super complicated layers of our existence of our life and i think of this with my painting you know just it's familiar when i get the thing right it has a familiarity to me and it feels very realistic even though for me my work's completely you know, abstract and everything, but there's a density to my work. And, and I think I relate to your work because of that. Like there's layering going on and there's hints of 
of underpainting and drawing on top of things. And, and what was it? This was a pizza box and there's a whole journey there. And do you think about that? I mean, you use the word dense and, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm fighting that I'm trying to put too much in the work, but then sometimes I just love it just to make it feel like this artifact of my life. That's even richer than my life, you know? Totally can relate to everything you're saying there because Again, as I step into a different part of my life, being in my 40s, you know, I, it's a totally different level of life, right? You know, I have my children. I am not, you know, trying to figure out certain things. You know, obviously, we're always trying to figure a lot of things out. But in life, no matter what age you're at, you know, but I feel like, you know, for me, the density is is what I'm trying to discover, you know, within myself and within, you know, my life and what it means. A lot of the times when I'm painting, I'm not really seeking out to represent myself, but it, but I do see that once I'm done with these paintings, I see that it's, it is, I'm, I am talking about myself in these paintings, you know? And a lot of the imagery is, you know, I'm the, the as you say, right, protagonist? Protagonist, yeah. Like the, the guy right? and the, <laughs> the guy that the story is happening to. Yeah. You know? <laughs> exactly, the protagonist. Uh, so... You know, it's it's interesting. And I, I think a lot of people will ask you, what does that piece mean? What does this symbolize? You know, and a lot of the times there's a lot of mixed meaning in, in the work that you do. I don't think I sit there and I necessarily have a purpose. It's more of a meditation, you know, totally. And I think that it's kind of the exercise that saves me uh, during this time of my life, even though art has always been a part of my life. Uh, I feel like I feel it more now vividly. I, I can I can feel it. Yes. Before I, I would, I think that as a younger artist, <laughs> I don't classify myself as old, but as a younger artist, I don't think I was feeling it yet. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm starting to feel how it connects. You know. Yes, yes. Which is so, it's so important, and it's so interesting that if you can, we can. <laughs> you know, like it really is an important thing to be able to transmit that kind of emotion and but it's first and foremost yours and then when i was you know in my late 40s mid 40s and i went through a pretty hard patch with my life and i was making art and i i remember i remember the day that i was like this has to get stronger i this i had run out of career options and i was financially messed up and all kinds of things so it was really like i was relying on my art in a way that I never had before. And there was something about the thoughtfulness and just, just the stakes were high. Like it matters, you know, like, and maybe that's the feeling you're talking about, you know, like you're, you're not a kid, you're like 40, whatever. And, and you're going to die at some point, you got kids and you got, you know, it's like, it's not a trial here. You know, it's not a dry run. This is, this is not a dress rehearsal. This is a real thing. What am I going to do? What else can I make? I mean, that's, that's the feelings that I had, but it made my work so much better. I, I didn't like the feeling, but it got my work to a better level. I don't know if that's where, what you're talking about a little bit nail on the head, as they say, because I mean, every word that you just spoke speaks to me in my life and what I'm going through you wow. know, in, at the moment, every exact word, you know, contemplating my mortality, contemplating, you know, my children, you know, the future, contemplating what I, what I, the mark that I want to leave, you know, as an individual, right? Yeah. So all those things are coming to the surface, you know? And just like you mentioned, it, it just, I couldn't have said it. I think the words that you chose were perfect because it sums up exactly what my inner, who I am inside yeah. is, is, is always kind of trying to, you know, connect with me as I feel like you're, you're almost like, sometimes I feel like you're two people, you know, um, and you're trying to connect. You're always trying to have that conversation. Yes. We have a lot that externally that we're doing in life that does not necessarily connect with internally who we are. And there's that, that constant back and forth, that constant battle. And I think as you get older, you start to really, you start to kind of become a little bit more honed in on it, right? Mm -hmm. You start to really understand a little bit more who you are, yes. what is purpose, you know, what is love, what is care, who are you nurturing yes. in your life, you know? And how yes. does that, how does that transfer into what you're doing, whether it's uh. art, 
music, uh, your teacher, whatever it may be. Yes. You know? Yes. It's, uh, how, how old are your kids by the way? And how many do you have and all that? I'm just curious. Sure. Yeah. I have two daughters. Uh, oh. Dakota's 15 and Dharma's 10. Okay. So, so yeah, yeah. So they're, they're in growing up, you know, it's they're yeah. not little kids anymore. <laughs> yeah. I had, I have two daughters as well. Uh, a little older, quite a bit older, but I remember, you know, when they were about your age, I was thinking, I wanted, it was like, I wanted to show up for my work in a way that I hadn't before. And I remember the pressure that I put on myself that kind of worked was, I want to demonstrate to these girls, like what it looks like, right? Like we, we can do things for our kids, you know, like that we wouldn't necessarily do for ourselves. And that's what, that's what kind of leveraged me going. And, and that really helped. It maybe was just a tool I used, but I was so important for me to do something that, that I could point at and say, see, look, you can do this in in whatever capacity. I mean, they're not necessarily going to be artists, but you know, it's, it's just that, putting the chips on yourself and, you know, just, I'm going for this here. This is, this is me. And I want to make this amazing. And what, who am I? And all, all the things you're describing, you know, it's, uh, but I, I distinctly remember that I, it was literally like, you know, I was upstairs in this old house we had. And I remember the painting I was working on, you know, it was really a decision. It was a complete change of orientation. And it was a much, much deeper, stronger felt sense of what I was doing. And it, and it worked. I mean, it, it, art to life came out of that. Uh, and my art got, did get stronger and I keep working at it, but, um, yeah, I, I relate to your work in, in that way. You know, there's something that's very serious about this work that is, it, it, it's, it's got a playfulness to it, but there's also a, it's just on this beautiful line of, it's not dismissed. You can't dismiss it. This is not folk art. You know what I mean? It's personal art, but there's a narrative in your culture and all that kind of comes through. Have you always painted kind of sim- symbolically stylized realism or style it's not even realism just style stylization is that what your art's always been like and is that relate to puerto rican culture a little or you know i'm just curious i feel like i've always kind of gravitated more toward toward that approach of stylization right i think that my my journey in as an artist and in, in my life has been interesting because I went to school, high school, which was a very focused high school on the arts, you know, and um, I learned a lot of skills, you know, and um, my art has become more genuine in its approach. So I think that's why I try to focus more on stylization because it expresses more of the things that I find gratifying in terms of symbolism and uh, things that, that for me, um, symbolize growth and and evolution so i try to always stick to that because it helps me stay playful it helps me stay more genuine Mm. my purpose is not to put out something that people are going to be in awe of the skill that i that i put into the work i i want them to see something that makes them feel inspired happy maybe strange maybe confused because i think that all those things are really great experiences in life from from early childhood, you know, my 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 art teacher, Carol Ann Parlato Rap, that, that's her name. I still remember her name. She was my my second grade art teacher throughout elementary school. Um, she's actually an active artist in in Brooklyn still. She's an amazing artist. Actually, some of her work, Nick, reminds me of it. It has it has a feel of what you're working on. You know, really. And, and they they I think the works can kind of connect somehow. I I'll pass on her info to you. Yeah, so let's point. we'll we'll include yeah. a link to her yeah. name. What was her name yeah. again? Carolyn Parlato Rap. And she was your second grade art teacher. Correct. Yeah, at PSO wow. seventy two. You know, and I I feel like being exposed to art, having her take us to you know museums, having her expose us to you know uh, contests that we were a part of setting up stage you know um art for the plays all of that really started to become experiences for me that i wasn't having 
at home. You know, my parents were big supporters of my art always. Ah, my step, so my step, it's, it is great. It's very, you know, it's, it's not always what you encounter in life. Right. Right. Yeah, totally. <laughs> but, but my parents were always big supporters. You know, even my, my stepfather, when he couldn't understand the art that I was painting, he even still, he would take me to get my canvases, to get my, you know, my, my, my stretcher boards and all that stuff. You know, he, he didn't understand that he was weirded out by it sometimes, you know, and he was like, why are you painting this? Why are these <laughs> figures looking so sad or, you know, all this stuff, you know, so, you know, but he still supported it. And I think that when you're having so many experiences where people are exposing you to something that's very much alive in you and that you're connecting with, it, it creates a lot of beautiful things that last a lifetime. So connecting with that and, and remembering my childhood and all those things, you know, I, I feel like it, it comes back in my artwork because I, I want whoever sees it to feel, I don't want anybody to feel intimidated by it. I, I want them to feel welcomed by it. So, so that's my approach. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. And so I had support. I mean, I, my father and my, you know, I, I was, it was great that I was doing art, you know, but it's rare. And so I think it's such a benefit to have that support early on, you know, with your family. And that's, I, I totally get that. And it's so cool that your stepdad wouldn't even know what the hell you were doing, but nonetheless, it's like, I'm in. You know? Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, my, my, my stepdad would, would, you know, sometimes the, the images that I was painting when I was in high school were sometimes a bit, you know, scary. You know, I remember I did this series of paintings of like people, uh, it, it looked like souls inside of like fire. And, and you know, it, it was a little bit kind of like, you know, in your face, it was kind of scary. And, you know, I grew up in a very Catholic household and, you know, my stepfather was just really kind of just, he was just like blown away by this, not in a good way. He was just like, what is this? This is scary. You know, where's this coming from? But even in those experiences, he still was very accepting of who I was becoming and the art that I was making. And my mom was always, my mom was more just constantly supportive. You know, my mother was the one that you know, would take me every two weeks when she would have a little bit of extra money from cleaning houses. She would clean clean apartments over in Manhattan, you know, wow. very, very wealthy people that she would like clean their apartments. And every two weeks when she'd get some money and she'd have a little bit of extra, she'd take me with her to my favorite comic book store, you know, and, wow. you know, she'd, she'd always buy me a comic book. So those are the things that I remember as support, you know, always supporting uh, that inclination in me to to want to be around art, whether it was yeah. a comic book or, you know, a canvas to paint on, you know, whatever that was. That's so great. You know, just having that love, man, it's like, it's such a friggin' awesome base to build a life on, you know? Exactly. Um, I feel, I feel that, you know, and I think that growing up, um, I feel like, you know, sometimes I can look back and say financially it was hard, but when I look back, I'm like, I, I didn't miss anything. You know, I had yeah. love from my yeah. parents and my parents weren't perfect. There was things that we struggled through, you know, mm -hmm, my, mm -hmm. my stepfather was an alcoholic from, for many, 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 most of my childhood, you know, wow, wow. Um, but was a very kind person, you know, regardless of his alcoholism, he was always a very kind person. So through all these struggles, I feel like, you know, we maintained a lot of love within the family through all the challenges. So I think that connecting my artwork to who I am, it always makes me lean toward, you know, even like what you guys mentioned about the pizza box. To me, that's what I want people to see. I want them to to understand that, you know, you don't need to go to, you know, Blake Art Materials to get yourself, you know, started on making a painting. And I don't mean that in a very, I'm not trying to like promote, what can I say? I'm not trying to promote this like crafty um, DIY. You know, like I'm not trying thing. to say yeah. that, that you have to be, yeah, I'm not trying to promote it at all. I just feel like there's there's something that I did not like in the in the art experience, and that was things that I couldn't relate to, things that intimidated me. And not to say that artwork that's very skilled is is not worthy, not to say that at all, but that in my approach and in, in what I want to do for the people who enjoy the work and for me putting it on canvas or on you know a piece of cardboard or a piece of wood that was discarded, I want people to feel connected to it and not intimidated by it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get it. It makes, it makes total sense. I feel like you're, and I'm curious how you do this, but your work and like you're, you're dealing with subject matter of like sadness and grief and, and you're holding all of it. 
And it's in all of your work, just like, you know, your family, the, it's like a raging alcoholic, but also this guy is just a lovely human being. You know, you have a, a kind of capacity that I feel that is wide and it's awesome for making art. And I, you know, it's came out of that family or whatever, but can you speak to just like how you think about, you know, the difficulties we just came through this really hard patch where, you know, COVID or, or the Ukraine or like how you manage, because you have it in your work. You, you're not afraid to have all of it. All of it is in the, in the work. And, you know, I know you want people to feel happy, but you also, I know, want them to feel the depth and the complexity and the contradictions, all of that. Yeah. I think that subconsciously it's always rolling, you know, it's like, it's like a, it's just it always turning, you know, subconsciously that goal, which is to make something that helps me process my life, you know, and yeah. there's, there's sadness in life and there's happiness in life. It's been a hard journey for me in terms of understanding that, you know, and I'm not sure where that, where that hardship comes from, because I feel like I did have a good balance of, you know, highs and lows growing up. And I think that if anything, when I'm really concentrating and meditating on something, which is when I'm having the most fun, I think I'm putting out the things that I may sometimes not understand about the things that I go through. I may not understand, you know, the sadness, um, the heaviness that sometimes we feel. And I believe it comes out in the work because it's just evident that there's a lot of sadness in the work, but then I believe I'm trying to also help my understanding of it by being a little bit playful with the imagery so that it's not just, you know, a somber kind of um, expelling of, of what I'm going through. Uh -huh. right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because, no, I get it. Right. Because, you know, that, that can also become something, you know, in itself, but I feel like, you know, when you, when you really think about, who you are as a person and how genuine you are, there's a lot of growth that you understand you have to go mm -hmm, through. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's part of my journey as a person. And it, it obviously connects with the art. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of growth. And I mean, honesty and authenticity and, you know, that's such a, that's the scary, but amazing thing about art. You, you, if you're willing, <laughs> you know, to put, go out into that, you know, on those skinny branches that are more dangerous and reveal yourself more. And I just, I feel like that's something that just your work has that, it just has that feeling, you know, and it's so, it's so personal. And of course, all art's personal, but sometimes, well, one thing that I got hung up on early on was I felt like I didn't have enough content. I wasn't saying anything very important. I hadn't had a lot of struggle. I had like a pretty privileged, you know, middle class, you know, upbringing. My parents were pretty good. A little, my dad was pretty shut down, but you know, like I mean, it was, there's just nothing hard. And, and I almost felt like, well, what can I say? <laughs> you know, and I, I eventually understood that, you know, my experience of the world is freaking it's totally different and worthwhile and people are interested, but I love how you're just so, this is you figuring you out and this is what you're making. And it's just so clean. But did you ever feel like, Oh my God, I don't have a big concept here, you know, or did you never fall for that? <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't feel like I've ever felt that. I, I feel like if anything, to be honest, I have felt that I, I don't want to say so much because I want it to be more of a subconscious approach. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I, I mean, when I work here in, in our apartment, uh, sometimes, you know, the kids or, or my partner will come over and say like, do you have an idea of what you're doing? Or are you just kind of going with the flow? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm, I get an image and I start from that image and that, you know, kind of reads a certain story to me and I keep, keep working. I feel like I, if anything, I've tried to stay away from having a narrative too much yeah, yeah. and let it be more about feeling and process and 
connect connecting you know yeah. connecting with, people, with others you know yeah that was that was totally what where i went in the end and it was but i don't i think i was just judging my work by looking outside of myself at all the kinds of work that was out there that i appreciated and loved and you know you try on other people's stories and you know it's like it wasn't mine but it just feels like you have such a solid groove that that you're in and it's just um it's powerful you know and so when you're making your work are you tell me about the story and and how you start and it's intuitive but it's also clues are given do you see things outside of yours in your you know walking home from you know the grocery store that give you an idea are these fragments of conversations how does it start for you i'm just curious i think it's a combination of a lot of things um I feel like inspiration strikes me in thought and image imagery. And I feel like that's where it sets off like a kind of like, you know, a spark where I feel like interesting. I was thinking about the story of what my, my grandpa used to tell me, you know, when he was, you know, after coming home from working the fields, he would sometimes stop at this, this little like type of business. It was like a hut type of thing. And they would sell like, food and beer and he would drink a lot and then he would you know come down the road um in puerto rico and he would say that he would see like you know ufos and uh, up on the mountains and like lights and stuff and he would just tell me all these weird stories and it, it really would freak me out at night because i was a kid <laughs> 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 and you know i would just like these, these were the summers when i used to spend them in puerto rico you know i would spend oh. the summers in puerto rico so i would stay you know most of the time with my dad but also with my grandparents and my grandparents lived in a really old country house up on the mountains that had very little electricity and it was super dark and just like you were in the middle of the mountains and he would come home to tell me these stories and i'd be so just like really interested in them but also like i'd go to sleep and i'd be like pretty scared you know <laughs> so you know like i having conversations with my mom about those things, sometimes those things come up and I, I put a lot of that, you know, in the artwork, you know, I think that it's based on imagery. It's based on memories. It's based on yeah. things that I want to portray. You know, there's a lot of cowboys in, in my artwork uh, and a lot of them are sometimes, you know, looking kind of sad. You know? <laughs> and I think that because I'm working with emotion, I think that it always translates in that way, you know, and I, yeah. I connect with it. So I think that's how it begins. You know, I'm really also inspired by, by materials, you know, like I, I love to look at thrift stores where they have, you can find a lot of really interesting frames that sometimes are just prints of like really cheesy artwork, you know, that you can pick up for just a few dollars and just paint over it with house paint and, you know, work on it. And it gives me the ability to have layers in, in yes. on the artwork, you know, that, that always appealed to me that that kind of surface has always appealed to me. Like uh, some of your work that I've looked at online has a lot of layer and a lot of grit and a lot of like history. It almost looks like tons of people have painted over this. Yes. You know? Yes. And I, I really love that because again, it symbolizes connection with past experiences, right. family, like all of that really like symbolizes that. Like you're going into a, a cave and you're looking at all these, you know, cave drawings and they're rough and, worn out and you know you can barely see some of them anymore you know? yeah and and something's so, happened before from another time yeah. and there's there's a artifacts of that you know in the work you know and in this exactly. case if you're finding a frame in a secondhand shop you know then you get that weird person's whatever that was it comes through you know and so that's so cool is the Give me, like, I've never been to Puerto Rico. I mean, like, what was the feeling? Like, you came from a city and then you would go and stay with your grandfather. And that must have just been so different, you know? And he, you said he worked in the fields and stuff. So it was like, were those nearby or like, what was that like? I just. Yeah, it was magical. I, if I can just say one word, it was magical wow. to, to go from Brooklyn, New York, get on a plane and uh, say goodbye to my mom and stepdad and have my dad pick me up on the other side. It was magical. You know, it was totally just a different world for me. My family lives in a part of the island that's the mountain region. It's, it's, uh, the name of the town is called San Lorenzo. It's just a lot of, you know, humble farmers that live there. And so my grandfather owned his own land and, um, 
you know, uh, pretty much just cultivated yams and, and things like that, beans and, you know, all sorts of things like that. And, uh, you know, that's that's kind of what he did ever since he was a child, you know. So uh-huh. he he grew up doing that. He raised his family on that, built his house on that, you know, um, wow. from, from that work, you know. Very, very small farm kind of um, work. Nothing big like we see here, in, you know, where I am in Minnesota. You know, there's tons of farms that are just humongous, like manufacturers, you know, they just like, they pump out a lot, nothing like that. You know, it was very small. So for me, the time there was really, you know, super interesting because I was coming from a, you know, a city and being in the country where, you know, we weren't, you know, we were taking showers that were like, there was no hot water. It was like super cold, you know, showers and just, um, you know, walking from, the you know the main store on in the town that was it was only one store in the town walking from there you know at eight o'clock nine o'clock at night back to my grandparents farm in total darkness you know just being guided by you know the moon (laughs) yeah Um, those those things were really beautiful those experiences are really beautiful and totally foreign for me so it was magical you know Uh, having that you know yeah yeah and extremely yeah and I, you know, I can imagine how the stories of your grandfather and just, you know, like when you don't do an activity or, you know, I think of how busy we are all, but like, I don't know, I maybe I'm making it up, but I imagine he was just such a thoughtful person because he just had to, he had some time to contemplate. He didn't do millions of careers. He did one thing and it like, yep. it worked and like think of all the energy that saves that you could, you know, put into your family or I don't know. It's really beautiful. It is really beautiful. It's a very simple life. I mean, as I get older, I appreciate that more. And I, um, and I, I see that as a huge value. There was never any, you know, riches in terms of, uh, you know, financial mm-hmm. riches or anything like that. Everything was always very humble. You know, every, everything was very simplistic. And, but what I experienced you know, in their lives was, I think I could say it was total joy because wow. like you said, there was no, you know, um, rat race and trying to figure out how much money you're making and the career path, which of again, I'm not, I'm not downplaying that. I'm not saying yeah, that that's, yeah. you know, a bad thing, a negative thing, mm-hmm. but there is something to be said about like what you just expressed, you know, someone who grew up knowing one thing and fulfilled that for their entire life. And that one thing was a very healthy thing, you know, very um, spiritually healthy, physically healthy, and um, just something that you pass down to the people around you. That's super, it's a, it's a magical gift, you know, it's, it's really amazing. So. And so the imagery in, in your artwork, you, you know, the, the different portraits and heads and talk to me a little bit about the different imagery that you, you're you using with, you know, are these stand-ins? I mean, are, does your grandfather appear in this at all or is it just more just different different forms, human forms or, you know? It all comes from inspiration from these characters in my life, you know? Mm. Um, I tend to draw a lot of inspiration from you know, my grandparents, my uncles, from the preachers in on, in Sunset Park in Brooklyn, there was a lot of preachers always on the corners, you know, this guy back here, this, this head right here. Yeah. It's, uh, paper mache and clay, and he's got a ton of teeth. It's yes, crazy. yes, yes. So this, you know, this head is is a preacher that I'm, that I'm working on, you know, and um, it comes from my childhood in Sunset Park. I used to see this preacher, he had this really big mustache you know and he had like a little bit of an afro and he would always stand on the corners and he would just like have this uh setup where he had a speaker and a mic and he had no megaphone he just had a speaker connect to you know a mic connected to a speaker and he had this little like shopping cart that he would roll it around and he'd just talk about you know the end of times and uh repenting and all that stuff and then when he would take a break and we would pass by you know he'd ask my mother questions about the bus coming or you know, if my mom had a few dollars for him to take a, a cab back home, things like that, you know, it's just like wow. really random stories of all these these characters, you know, and I feel this impresses me. And when I think back, I, I really I appreciate people that like that. I yeah. appreciate people that have personalities that are their own genuine kind of, you know, take on who on who they are and what what their life means to them. And it's just 
something that's really kind of it out it's it's outpouring uh, of inspiration for me you know yes. so those characters do come from a lot of that i have a few characters that are preachers because that person you know that type of you know person in life has always appealed to me in different ways because i come from a you know a background of you know uh, catholicism and then you know my mom went into becoming a you know a kind of like a pentecostal type of church that she joined and ah. so a lot of things you know that we that we experienced in life you know to yeah. now being someone who's spiritually very open and does not you know have any denomination so she's been through her own journey of, of spirituality so i think that that's given me a gift to understand that you know there's different you know stages in life and different levels and yeah you know, things that you can experience so you have to be open to all of that you know and yes yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. No, that's great. I mean, I just, you know, I I don't know. It's like, um, I feel like, have you done much theater or, and you know, like, I feel like your work is a, like, it's part of a bigger picture. You know, I really sense that when I look at these are like stills, but I'd love to see, did you do any productions uh, ever? You know, I haven't, Nick. And, um, I think that's something that would be really gratifying for me to be yeah. a part of something like that. Yeah. And, you know, um, I've, I've also been really interested in, you know, paper mache and, and, you know, making like this preacher that I was showing you, it, there's a full body that I have in the closet that's uh-huh. still in the works, you know, so he's going to be pretty big, uh, made out of paper and tape and um, clay and all sorts of different uh, materials that I'm putting together. So I have this vision of what he's going to look like. I just, haven't completed him but yeah being a part of a production and working on a different level in terms of art would be amazing i think that that would be really inspiring yeah because it's you're dealing with time and i don't know you know it's just uh interaction with all these worlds it's uh you know do you think of that i mean the the kind of dream state and the like for me i notice in the morning like it's easier to access that like the it's thinner you know like Mm -hmm. i mean these preachers they're for whatever they're talking about they're they're speaking about another place and but i just i i don't know i mean when do you feel more connected to that the other side you know is that how you think of it well i think that for me a lot of it just, you know, kind of meshes together in terms of like your dream state and your real life are very much connected. You know, mm. um, we think of dreams as like silly stories that kind of play out in our minds, you know, as we sleep. And, you know, a lot of it does seem like that. But I think that there's uh, there's a lot of connection. So for me, I think the the times when I'm most inspired is when I'm when I'm feeling something, you know, when I'm feeling uh, it could be day or night. You know, I, I feel like I've had moments during the mornings where I've been really inspired and have been able to start something and get really far in it, you know, and then head off to work or do something else, take care of kids. But I feel like for me, it, it's just it's spur of the moment. And I have I do have to capture it. That's one of the things that I've noticed is that if I feel inspiration for something, I need to capture it. Even if I go back to it a few days later, I need to capture the sense of what it is, more or less, even yes. if I'm blocking out you know, some, some color, see the, the cowboy in the back. With yes. The heart? Yes. Yeah. So that's going to be a three part. What do you call those again? Um, triptych kind of. Yes. Or? Triptychs. I, uh-huh. I really love triptychs. And um, that is part of a piece that's, a, that's going to be a triptych and it's, it's very plain, you know, and it's very simple. And sometimes the kid, you know, my daughters see it and they're, they usually say like, it looks really cool like that. I think it's finished. And I'm like, yeah, I understand where you're coming from, but I'm in my mind, I have other other things that are going to be happening, you know? Um, yes. So laying down the idea at least and having it, you know, in my surroundings can always help me go back to it, you know? So I tend yeah. to do that a lot. I have a lot of different projects that I'm working on. Uh, yeah, I can, yeah. I can, yeah. Like the, <laughs> you know, that sculpture guy in the yeah. closet and yep, those, yep. all the things. Yeah. I like, I love that too. I have a pretty, a lot of things going simultaneously, you know, people, have said, you know, like, that's just crazy. It's exhausting. And it's like, it is the best, (laughs) you know, it It gets so much energy and, and there's so many possibilities. And then there's all these connections between the things you're doing. And, you know, so I'm, I'm totally the same way, you know, but if I get an idea, I'll just go, I'll just run, run with it totally, you know? 
Wow. So interesting. And I love getting to talk to artists because I love this background of all the things I wish I could just zip in this, you know, I'm looking at you, you've got all these figurines and all these drawings behind you and all this stuff. Is this the studio? Like, is your studio kind of like just a gathering place of all these bits and pieces, or is this just a shelf behind you of all this stuff? It's a shelf. It's a very humble, I I feel like my, my life is, is humble in that way where I I don't have a studio. This is my bedroom right in front of me. Here is our bed. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Right. (laughs) You know, right. Right next to me here is our, you know, dresser drawer where we keep our clothing and some art supplies. Um, I don't have a, an official studio. I work on the floor. I work. Sometimes I take stuff outside where I'm, you know, I go and I lay out a tarp. Yeah. Just paint things, you know, and at least get the, you know, some of the materials that I'm using primed, you know. Uh-huh. Um, so I, I really just work wherever I can, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Are you, but this, this desk back here. Oh, uh, it's so cool. Yeah. So it's just a, a bunch of stuff that I have there. I mean, that's like, you know, it's, yeah, it's kind of just a lot of stuff. <laughs> I love, I love saints. So I, you know, anytime I find saints, saints I pick them up, you know, Uh huh. Um, I found this Jesus the other day at this thrift store. He's got his hands missing, you know? Oh, and, that's so good. Yeah, I really love these type of sculptures and they inspire me to make art. And I'm also thinking about putting them together as uh, other types of sculptures, you know, at some point. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're just kind of laying around for inspiration. But yeah, so just constantly working on stuff, you know. It's so great because, you know, I work with a lot of people, a lot of artists and you know, the studio, I don't have a place to work and all the reasons you can't, you're, and you're just raging in your work. And it's like, you're doing this, you're just doing it where you can. And it's just, uh, it's so great that you don't have that as a, you know, as a barrier for yourself at all. It's so, it's just so refreshing. No, definitely so, not a barrier. And, you know, I'm running out of space, Nick. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you always run out of space, you know. Uh, it's just like the perennial problem. Yeah. But yeah. so, you know, we get a lot of people listening who are trying to do what you're doing, you know, and just figuring it out. And I mean, you're just the poster child for like just think and work and work through it. And what have you learned? Or like, I don't know if you teach at all, but any thoughts you have about what could be really helpful for people who are kind of behind you or trying to trying to go in a more personal direction and just, just find their way. You know, it's, it's hard to find it. You know, it's hard to put your finger on it and, and then trust it. You know, there's a, a certain amount of trust. You just seem so comfortable and, clear you know it's like your grandfather it's like nope i love doing this thing and i'm this works and then uh, i'm not going to worry about that i'm going to explore other realms i mean mm-hmm. i don't know if that's just my you know i'm just making that up but how do you how do you cultivate confidence and direction well i think first of all i think it's um it's a process right it's a journey that you're on as a person, it's very individual. I, again, like I was saying before, Nick, it, I, I feel like, you know, these past, like, you know, five to 10 years, you know, I feel like I've really seen my life in a different light. So I think that for people that are wanting to, I guess, tap into a more genuine place in, in who they mm-hmm. are and how they express their art, it's the only thing I can say is, you know, live the journey, you know, live truly your journey and find what connects what makes sense to you and i think once you find that if you're approaching it in a genuine way and in, in an honest way i feel like you start to have fun you know you start to really mm. um, enjoy the the creativity and making something you know yeah. and again i have a lot of my you know family members and my art artists who are you know really great friends of mine that i have taken influences from them in terms of you know living that you know one of my like i mentioned before He's like a brother to me, you know, Alex, you know, we grew up in the same neighborhood and then he was my student teacher and became really great friends, really connected. He's been a a big source of inspiration for me because he has taught me that, you know, he has definitely taught me that with his life. And um, I think being genuine to that journey and finding what is, you know, honestly yours, what the most honest part of who you are, Mm. that is, that is when you start to really understand this is what makes me feel, you know, creative this is what comes out of me naturally and i I think at that point you really start to become 
you know, who you're meant to be, right? Uh, and and that's that's a, that's an ever evolving <laughs> process yes. and journey in its own, right? Because yes. you, you still have, you know, the rest of life, however long that is for you, you have yes. that as your journey, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, that's just really beautiful. Listen, thank you so much for uh, just this conversation. It's uh, just really, really uh, wonderful. I mean, I, I could sense so much of who you were by just that one painting. And it, and it, it's just really gratifying to just, you know, open the door and just get to, to peer in at all, all, all what you're doing. And it's just uh, super inspiring for me. So thank you. Thank you, Nick. I really do appreciate this. I'm, I'm really humbled by this. I'm, I feel like I, I see myself as a really simple person, you know, and so being a part of this has been, it's pushed me to a different place. And I'm, yeah, you know, really, really honored by this. Uh, extremely, I, I can't yeah. have words for it, and yeah. um, really, really inspired by it. So, thank you for having yeah. me and for asking me questions because I don't always think that I'm deserving of that. So, I, I really yeah. do appreciate that. I think things happen for a reason, and I think I feel like you can lean into the complexity. I think you're yes, there's a simplicity, but there's to what you're doing, but there's. I don't know. I just, I just feel like you can step so much deeper into it. Like don't limit yourself. You know, I want you to have a fucking 5,000 <laughs> square foot studio. Right. Like, <laughs> like, dude, like, what would you make? You know, like yeah. get a big studio, man. Like bring yeah. this work, what you're making, dude, it's, it's so strong. And I just want to see it bigger and richer and more. So that's a voice that, maybe you'll listen, you know, maybe it's like a, a contributing voice because your work's awesome, dude. And I just, you know, I just want to see more of it. <laughs> I appreciate those words, Nick. That really does, uh, it, it seeps really deep into my heart when you said that. And um, I, I will I will make a vow to not live in myself and to know that yeah. that big things are coming and that huge things. Uh, I'll be able to create bigger and, and have more space and, and really completely enjoy it and still connect with other people. And yeah, oh, hopefully absolutely. someday I can connect with you in person. And absolutely. I would love you that. out there in, in your place, you know. So yeah. I'm really honored by this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, dude. Okay, we'll we'll stay connected. I'll I'll talk to you, yes. I'm sure. Okay. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Hey, thanks for listening to the Art to Life show. If you enjoyed the podcast, please help me get the word out by sharing it with your friends on Instagram at art to life underscore world. The recording of this and all episodes, along with a place to leave comments, see additional photos, and discover a whole new approach to making art can be found by going to arttolifepodcast.com. And secondly, if you could leave a rating and review and whatever app you're listening on today, I would super, super appreciate it. It makes a big difference. And last but not least, before you go, if you'd like to be on my artist list, every Sunday morning, I send out a video blog all about art making. Go to arttolivepodcast.com to sign up. And all these links are in the show notes, of course. Thanks so much for being here, and we'll see you next week. Bye.